Okay, well, thank you very much, Amanda. Um, I wish this was the last one. Yes. I wish this was the last one. I mean, you, I mean, you said earlier on it was you know, a pleasure to have me here. Well, I just have to say it would be an even greater pleasure if you'd pull me off and said, uh, sorry, it's cancelled because there's nothing uh, planned to report this year. I mean, the fact is that uh, we have uh, had, over the last five years, uh, a focus on the plight of destitute asylum seekers in Leicester. There's been an enormously powerful message to us, uh, and for decision makers and uh, politicians, an uh, enormously powerful tool. I'll say a bit more about that a bit later on. But um, while it is, it is obviously you know, sad that we have it again, it is good to see such a professional piece of work. And I just do want to just begin by just giving credit to all of those who have been part of putting this together, because it is uh, very, very uh, effective. Uh, and it is very credible because of the, uh, the professionalism of the people who have done it, so great credit to them. Um, just wanted to dwell on one or two of the themes uh, within it. Um, and to say first that you know, what, it, what it shows yet again is that the way in which the system works is one that is uh, an incredible waste. It's a waste of the talents of the people who are caught up in the system. It's a waste for the communities in which they're living. Uh, and frankly, it's also a waste for the wider society of which we're a part and the, the country of which we're a part. In that, of course, if people are not able to contribute uh, and are forced into a situation where they are a burden, then they're not contributing to our wealth and our, our national well being. Now, in a sense, you know, that national well-being is only a small part of it, but it is there, and it is underlying uh, what is, uh, I believe, fundamentally a very wasteful system. It is also, obviously, something that has an important effect on the people who are caught up in it. It's an important effect on their health and their well-being. Uh, people are often very vulnerable. People are often here with pre-existing conditions that, as a result of where they come from, uh, are, are ones that are very threatening to their long-term well-being uh, and, of course, find themselves in circumstances where that health and well-being is undermined still further. Um, the other thing, one of the things that struck me yet again from this is just uh, how by any standards the policy of the situation that people find themselves in is ineffective. Because there's no evidence at all that the plight of destitute asylums is anyway, even by the perverse logic associated with it, any sort of deterrent to people mm -hmm. to put themselves in that situation. Uh, you know, it doesn't even work by those perverse, by the perverse logic of, uh, of, the, of, the, of, the, of that argument. It doesn't work. Um, and of course, one of the fundamentals of all of this is that um, by creating a regime where destitution is the, uh, is, it, 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 is the situation that people find themselves in, uh, having sought asylum. We are thereby also creating a society where destitution, in effect, becomes an acceptable way of life. And that just cannot be an acceptable policy outcome in a 21st century democracy in a wealthy, despite all of the things that have happened, a wealthy 21st century democracy. Um, it just is not acceptable. So by no measure at all can the policy that lies behind this find justification. It doesn't work. It produces appalling suffering for those who are a part of it. And it is a blight on our society. I would like to say uh, that I was optimistic about the next 12 months, the next few years. Um, I've been very critical of my own party and government, uh, and I, I don't want to digress into something that's part of political, but um, I have to say I have been very disappointed by the Liberal Democrats. I'll leave it at that, but you know, I had hoped be better for some of my friends uh, within that party. Uh, and I don't actually see them as having made a significant difference to the way in which the new government is approaching this. I hope I'm wrong. Um, 
and I do say that with some degree of friendship for many of the people within that party, um, whose views on many other aspects of these sort of issues, I find myself in some sympathy for social liberals, as it were, as opposed to the economic liberals, but I say I'm not going to take that. Anyway, um, I, I, I did actually just want to actually make one um, local point, and I think it, it, what is picked up in here, and it is that um, we in Leicester uh, do have a particular um, issue with the closure of the Immigration Advisory Service, mm -hmm. the IAS. Mm -hmm. It is something that I, I'd already written to the uh, new Secretary of State about, and will continue to press on, mm -hmm. um, because um, there are many, both those who are part of the group that are being looked at here and many others beyond that, mm -hmm. who do not get the support that we ought to be getting, uh, and that they might get, actually, in some other places mm -hmm. uh, as a result of that. And I, it, is, it is something I just can assure you I have already taken over the Secretary of State. We'll continue to press them on, we'll continue to ask parliamentary questions about, because at the very least, we could be making sure that those who are subject to the to broader considering today and many others are at least getting decent advice and support uh, and shouldn't have to rely on the voluntary support that they get from, from many others. Um, now, um, I want, having praised this report, also just to take the opportunity to first of all thank the Red Cross for hosting this, this here again today but also to, to, to welcome and to sound very much looking forward to looking at the report that they they launched, mm -hmm. which looks at a, a wider, mm -hmm. a wider, a wider perspective. Um, I think that you know that will undoubtedly help to add to the national debate, particularly when it is coming from the Red Cross. And I realise that you know the Red Cross perhaps has sensitive areas here in terms of the extent to which it is a campaigning organisation, um, and that may be something that. Uh, it may be an inhibition in the past. If it has been, I'm pleased it's an inhibition that they've got over. Uh, and uh, and I, I say I'm looking forward to reading that. And I'm sure that too will lead to the uh, to, to more informed debate on the national level. Um, almost finally, I want just again, as I have done on previous occasions, just to pay tribute to Zayn. Has, uh, has uh, you know, he, he's here as a professional worker. I'm, I'm, I'm here as a politician around the side. Just to say that I am enormously impressed by the volunteers who work in organisations throughout Leicester and Leicestershire in support for those who are, whose part is highlighted in, in that report and indeed for many others in, in, in similar sorts of situations. Um, the work of those volunteers does at least something to try to make the plight of those who suffer from this system uh, somewhat near bearable. I, I know it's not always the case that they're successful in that, sometimes they are. Sometimes they do actually manage to make a difference, uh, and I very, very, very much uh, admire the time, the energy, and indeed, in many cases, the expertise that they bring to to, uh, to, to that work. Uh, I see some of those that they they help in my surgeries as MP. I often feel quite impotent in, in my ability to, to help them. Uh, I admire those who actually do make a difference by actually giving other time uh, and their energy and their expertise. Uh, and I, th I think we all need to be grateful for the work that they do uh, on our behalf. Uh, some of them I know are here today, uh, many I know are not. And uh, I hope that the message will go back to them, that their work is, uh, is appreciated. Um, I also want to say something that I've um, said in the past about the media, um, that uh, I do wish that political colleagues would actually look at the reality of the situation, uh, the reality of the plight of those who seek asylum and, refu and refugee status in the UK, rather than believe what they read in the newspapers, or indeed create the stories in the newspapers. Um, and really to, to, as I come towards the conclusion, I want to say, actually, to on a slightly more encouraging note, uh, that secret millionaire thing was, was actually quite interesting because um, actually that's a mainstream <laughs> broadcast actually taking this, this issue seriously yeah. uh, and showing through a semi-documentary type approach uh, okay, it, it's got a bit of a you know, game feel type thing, you know, and, <laughs> but, but you know, saying, I mean, as they say, was saying, you know, I mean, let's just take it. You know, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> he, 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 he can 